Coding with AI and Copilot is great, but often we want to give it access to specific tools like APIs that we have access to, and that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to build an MCP server using Python and FastMCP, and we're going to give it access to the Zite API, which is going to give it a load of powerful web scraping abilities. Now here at Zite, we scrape loads of data from loads of companies, millions and millions and millions of rows. So if you're interested in web scraping, there'll be some links in the description below where you can try our API and uh, I'm sure you'll be happy with it. So what I've got here is my project file open and I have my very simple fast MCP server here. This is from their demo and uh, you can just copy this out. But the key thing here is this mcp.tool and this is a Python function that's gonna do something that your AI through Copilot in this case is gonna have access to. Now what we want to do is we want to create a .vs code file uh, folder and then add in this mcp.json file. Now this is how to do it per project, right? So this is only going to run in this project. You can install these globally, but I prefer just to keep them within my project. So I want, you know, if I'm doing a web scraping project, I can put this in and it has access to my web scraping tools, for example. Now, this is fairly straightforward, JSON. You can actually generate this with fast MCP install, mcp.json, and then main.py. And I've done dash dash copy, so that copies most of this to your clipboard. You'll need to add in the servers, and then you just paste everything down here with the uh, location of the file that you want to run that is your MCP server. So what you can do now is you could take this file and copy it into any of your other projects, and your copilot or your AI would have access to it within that within that project. And now to check that, I'm going to do start, and we should have no errors. We can see that it's running. You can also do Command Shift X, and we can see down here that there's this demo MCP server. This is what I've installed here. You can see it by the name, and it is indeed running. You can also install it, uninstall it from here as well. The other thing we can do is open up our agent mode, and down in the bottom right, probably behind my head, there's a configure tools button, and we have here, we can see we have the Pylance MCP server, which is fine, and we have our demo MCP that has add two numbers together, which is exactly what was written in our main file here. Now we have access to this. So let's say, call our copilot and say uh, add five and six, and I'm gonna tell it to use the MP MCP server because otherwise it will just do it by itself because obviously these are not the sort of tools that you need to worry about running. We can see here it's coming up here and saying demo MCP input, and it's gonna run this. I'm gonna say uh, allow uh, in this session, or just click continue, and it's gonna come back with the answer. This is run through that tool that was created in our MCP server here. So what does this mean? Well, we can effectively put whatever we want in here to then have access to that and give our AI that. Now, in this use case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a tool within the server that has access to the Zite API. So it's gonna be able to access data from websites much more easily. It's gonna download the HTML, and then I can use it to generate CSS selectors or XPath in a much better way than you could do normally. Now this is obviously quite useful, or you could use it to do the auto extract and give it product information so you could do something else. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a new tool. So we do at MCP tool, uh, extract HTML and this is going to take in a URL which is a string and then it's going to return a dictionary in this instance. So now to do this I'm going to need to use requests so I'm just going to do import requests and I'm going to come over now to I will just put pass in here so we don't forget I'm going to come over now to my Zite Playground like this. Let's make this a bit bigger. And we're gonna go ahead and go grab code snippet because I want the HTML like this. And this is gonna give me the code snippet that I need. So I'm just gonna copy out this part. We don't need that, but I'm gonna copy this. We need to remember that we need to import base64 because we return the HTML to you base64 encoded. Let's come back to our Visual Studio code and let's paste this in. Make sure this all lines up. And now we can go ahead and let's just change what we need. So we need to import base64 decode, like so. Thank you, Copilot, done. And now I'm going to return, and it's gonna be a dictionary. So I'm gonna call it HTML, and I'm gonna say that we are returning the HTTP response body. Let's move this in. Now we need to, now we need to have our API key. There's two different ways you can do this. Obviously, you don't wanna be putting your API key directly in. 
But what you can do is you can put it into your MCP server or you can run it through the environment variables. For this demo, I'm just going to import OS and I'm gonna bring it in myself in this way through my environment because I know that if I'm running this MCP server within the environment that is gonna be my web scraping project, it's gonna have my API key in. There's loads of information on the on the fast MCP of how you want to handle your environment variable, so it's up to you. So I'm going to call this API key, and this is going to be os.getenv, it's like API key, and I'm going to do if a if API key is none, thank you, we'll raise a value error. Not really what I want, but we'll just raise a bare exception, like so. So now that you know, if it doesn't find it, we're going to have an exception, which means there'll be an issue. And this should probably go at the top of our file because if it doesn't find an API key, we want to not uh, run the server, and then we'll be able to see what the what the issue is. So I can get rid of it here. Okay, so we can change this up now. Uh, your API key. So this is going to be API key. And the URL is going to be the URL that we are asking for, like so. Don't need follow redirect, but we did want HTTP response body. So we should be able to save this now. And let's rerun our server. So I'm just going to come over to demo and CP. I'm just going to go restart. And it's going to say discovered tools. And it says tool extract HTML does not have a description. We definitely want a description. So we're going to go ahead and put that in here. And it's going to say extract HTML content from a URL using that API. Perfect. So tools must be accurately described. So let's go ahead and restart now. Discovered two tools. So if I then come over here and look in this, our demo MCP server now has extract HTML content. So what I can do is if I grab a URL, let's just grab this one, come over to my code and go extract the HTML from here using site. Oops, spelled the company name wrong. I'm sure no one will mind. And it says, do you want to use your MCP server? Uh, yes, I do. And obviously you can make it so it does always allows in this session, but we'll just hit continue. So we know that it's working. And now it's been successfully extracted. So I'll just say, uh, what is the title of the page? Just so we kind of get an idea that we that it knows what we're looking at here. Perfect. Now what I could do is I could say, for example, let's say we were trying to extract you know, something from this and our general AI wouldn't have access to it because it would be blocked, whereas the Zite API allows you to mitigate that. We could say, you know, give me selectors for all links that contain the word what's on this page core. Let's put that in there. Let's see what we get back. And you can get the idea. So if this was a product page, for example, let's do that actually. Let's let's do that so we kind of can really understand what we're looking at. Let's just grab a URL for a page here and we'll do it again. We'll say uh, extract the HTML from this page using sites and I'll spell our company correctly this time. So this is kind of like one of the things that I've been using this for because we're giving our AI access to pretty much any page that we want rather than it being restricted. You know, it come, comes up and says, oh, I can't access that for whatever reason. But now through Zite API and our MCP server, we can. So we can do this and it will get it to extract the HTML from here. And I'll say this is a product page. Give me selectors for a standard product schema that work for this page and uh, return a code block using BS4 to pass it. Let's see what happens. So we can see that it's probably mostly correctly going to extract the selectors properly because it can see the HTML. So the biggest problem when you're trying to do this with outside API is that it can't actually get the access to the API, the actual proper HTML because it's been blocked. Whereas in this case it does and it's written the parsing code for me. So that's my kind of example, my reasoning for doing this. It's very, very simple to build these MCP servers. Wow, my screen is a mess. Let's close all this stuff up. 
Um, it's very simple to build these and you can then give access to you know, your AI through Copilot or Claude or whatever you use. They both have ways to install and run. You can give it access to these specific highly specialized tools, which you know is a very, very powerful thing. And that was you know very quick and easy to write. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, please like, comment and subscribe. I really appreciate that. There'll be links in the description down below to check out Zite API for yourself. It's very powerful and it cover all your web scraping needs. So thank you very much. See you in the next one.